point. There he is. Okay. Um, so, if I was doing readings for children or, um, you know, generally Christian or more uh, conservative or, I, I, I don't know, you know what I'm trying to say. And it's, it's not just like maybe sexuality, but also the more fear-based stuff. Like what, what type of death do you want to present on the card? And that's one of the joys of this kit or system is you can customize your own deck. Um, that's not a bad magician. I do like the concept that it's like a magician of spirits rather than tools, which is atypical. But the black and white, the air, the art style is fairly simple. Anyways, what was my point? Oh, um, yeah, the, the deaths and the devils, um, some of them will scare people, concern people, um, May, reinforce the idea that these are tools of Satan or something, which is a concept some people have. So for some some audiences, you might want to avoid this. And one thing I realized with this system is if I cleanse my traditional deck, my base deck, so that it's more um, accessible to the general audience, um, more family-friendly, if you will, then... I can, and you know, the goal is to move all the scarier, the more lewd, more graphic things um, to the beyond deck. So you kind of have the family friendly deck and the adult deck, mature deck. And then if you want to, you know, even if you're doing readings the same day at the same table, depending on whether or not you have children. It, around or people sensitive to certain topics you can just stick with this deck and when you do a reading you can immediately um, you know fill the blanks as you go with the idea that um, you know they all get shuffled up anyways and you're still just pulling you know it just you're filling the gaps as you go Oh, anyways, I kept it to about a half hour, but like I said, I was pretty excited about this system. Um, of course, if you use it, part of what's exciting is all this is tweakable. But the main idea is to get a smaller percentage from your secondary deck. And so this is a system that would work well if you have a deck you're very familiar with and you want to spice it up with a new deck that you're not as familiar with because again if you're doing a a large spread instead of having to look up <clears throat> meanings of 10 cards and read through in incorporate and synergize all that information um you can use you know the if the base deck is stuff you already know and are familiar with um then yeah four-fifths of your deck is going to be stuff you already know. But then you're going to get to learn, um, you're going to get to see, use, and learn stuff from your new deck. And uh, uh, as my final aside, hopefully, um, as a Magic player, I've gotten more used to these rarity shifts because the way they sell boosters is you'll have... Uh, like 14 um, playing cards in the deck or in the booster pack but one will be a rare or rarer one will be an un or sorry three will be uncommon and then you get 10 commons so in building a deck 
you're more likely to have duplicates of commons and more of those commons as like a core of your deck as the more common core of your deck um, but then the rare cards are what's going to be that that spice that you see lots so often but um, in terms of the game that spice is going to be your bombs that really help you win the games um, either by being just inherently strong themselves or by synergizing with those more common cards but obviously here in divination what you're controlling is the chance of it coming up so again I just really like the idea of keeping the odds high with a, a base deck of traditional tarot and then adding that um, that beyond where all, all these um, stranger meanings maybe maybe a more obscure meanings or um, maybe less applicable maybe just harder to wrap your head around or just slower because you gotta look it up anyways that is that is base blanks and beyond I hope I get views. This is exciting. I'm going to share this. I already commented about um, my plan for splitting the decks in the alley group. So I'll probably go back and post this video there. But I'll also just post it standalone. Because, again, I think this idea is awesome. And um, I, I, I hope it's useful for somebody else. I hope I hope somewhere out there somebody's just as excited to be able to split their deck in half so that they actually have a reason to handle them separately and beyond that to um, I hope some you know I hope a bunch of people like the idea that this this is like a rare trigger so you have a a deck of common meanings that come up often and a deck of more obscure meanings that spice it up more occasionally and appropriately thanks for joining me um, I've got a playlist going I think it's got everything that I've made for the alley in one playlist so at least that's a good you know if you click on playlists and look for that um, it's it's a good way to see what I've talked about and if there's anything else of interest in this alley tarot discussion is that rabbits yeah I didn't know Queen of Pound oh she has a rabbit on her chest too nice uh, insert catchphrase here This is, this is me fumbling with a camera I'm not familiar with.